Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I'll teach you how to identify and label the bones of a typical amniote skull or early reptile skull. The skull is a complex arrangement of bones that we can think of as coming together to form the fusion of a single bony element that supports the brain, eyes, jaw muscles, nasal passages, and mouth. The evolution of the skull involved the combination of neurocranium bones associated in early fish with the encapsulation of the brain and eyes, and a, a series of dermal bones or bony scales that protected the head in early fish. Thus, the reptile skull is a complex fusion of bony dermal scales onto a neurocranium. In lungfish and other sarcoptrygian fish, the names of these dermal scale bones vary quite a bit. But as we look at early reptiles, the names of the bones will remain consistent enough that it's a good time to learn these terms. All right, I'm gonna draw an early reptile skull of Paleothrius, a 30 million year old reptile from the middle Pennsylvania of Nova Scotia. Because it is so primitive, it will exhibit many bones that are not found in living reptiles, birds and mammals, but it'll serve as a good reference to learn the anatomy of the skull. All right, here we have a primitive skull that we're gonna look at, reptile skull. The first thing we're gonna notice is uh, the orbit. The orbit, of course, is where the eye goes into. So this is the eye socket referred to as the orbit. It's a good reference point to find where the orbit is because this will help us figure out the names of the bones surrounding it. Now, in the upper part of the skull, um, the skull proper, we have the maxilla bone and the premaxilla bone. These are usually the only te uh, bones with teeth in them. We have an opening up here. This is the nares for the nasal opening. And then above this, we have the nasal bone, the lacrimal bone, which is usually bordered by the orbit here, the prefrontal, the frontal bone, the postfrontal, so a pre and postfrontal, a postorbital that's behind the orbit, and then this one, the cheekbone, is called the jugal the squamosal, the parietal, the supertemporal on the very top here, and then down here in the corner near the jaw joint, we have the quadrojugal. Now the lower jaw in reptiles is composed of a number of bones. On the outside, we can see the surangular bone here, the angular bone, and the denary with the dentary, the one with the teeth in the lower jaw. Now let's draw a top view of the skull. All right, so let's label the top view. We have, in the front, we have the nasal openings, and so these are the nasal bones, and the premaxilla in the very front. Followed behind, we have the forehead bones, the frontals, and then on top of the head, we have the parietals. And we have this little opening called the pineal opening that we'll see in many reptiles as well as in early fish that we saw before. We have the orbits on either side, and so that makes these uh, postfrontal here, uh, behind the postorbital that forms sort of this bar, and then we see the uh, jugal down here, as well as the maxilla over here. Then we have the squamosals on either side, and then we have the quadrojugal down here, 
And in the back of the brain case, we have a number of bones. This is the supratemporal, the temporal, and the postparietal. We'll see a lot of extra bones back here in these early reptiles that are later lost in uh, more advanced reptiles. All right, let's flip that skull over and we'll draw a, the roof of the mouth, the ventral edge of the re early reptile. All right, so let's label the bones in the ventral view of the roof of the mouth. We have in the front the premaxilla with the teeth, the maxilla on either side, we have the nasal openings here, and in the roof of the mouth here, we have the vulmar, the pterygoid, which is back here, which is where the upper jaw muscles attach, and the ectopterygoid, which are back here. We have this long bone at the base of the cranium, the basocranium, that's called the perisphenoid. And then back here in the corner, we have the quadrate. Let's now draw the back of the brain case, the back of the skull. All right, so let's label the bones here. This opening here is the foramen magnum. This is where the spinal cord comes out of the skull to form uh, the central nervous system. Below that is this big ball, and the ball is called the occipital condyle, and that attaches, articulates with the first cervical vertebrae to form the neck. On either side, we have the ex-occipital, the osteoidic above that, the supraoccipital, which is up high. These long ones are the squamosal that we're seeing in the back as well as the supratemporal, which is up here, and the temporal, and the postparietal, and in the top of the brain case is the parietal, which are paired. The other one we can see in this view is the quadrate. The quadrate is the articulating bone with the lower jaw, and we see that on both sides. We can also see in this view a bone down here, which is called the stapes. The stapes is the hyomandibular that has been incorporated into the back of the brain case here for hearing. Now I've uploaded blank figures of the skull of Paleothrius on the class page so that you can uh, practice labeling the various reptile skull bones in different views. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin Links are found in the description below.